Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about newbie programmers and what they should avoid. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, what should a newbie programmer avoid learning when becoming a web developer? Well, uh, I would say that everything and anything that isn't critical for your first job you should completely ignore. And that is, of course, very easy for me to say because I, on, I would like to think at the very least that on average I know what those things are. Uh, you may or may not have heard me say that core skills are the thing that you should focus on. Uh, I would say almost exclusively as a software developer up until you get to a point where you have them kind of in the... They need to be at the level where you feel comfortable doing the daily grind type of stuff, regardless of which stack you're talking about. And after that, uh, you can absolutely branch out a little bit more. So uh, the reason why I say this is because the the issue for you as a new software developer is that you don't know what you need. You Everything seems relevant because unfortunately in software development, uh, it's a little bit like the shampoo industry or the fitness industry and so forth like everybody is saying the same things and everybody is telling you that everything that they're doing is relevant and so forth and so forth and if you were to well kind of treat that or take it at face value uh, you're going to you're not going to get anywhere at all like you're there's simply too much and there are simply too many tools uh, and so that's why I keep telling people that if you want the truth of what you need to know, always look at the job postings. Never listen to, ever, like never ever listen to a YouTuber, never listen to a blog article or anything like that, or the top 10 langu languages to learn in 2000 blah 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 blah, or if you're watching this in 3000 something, uh, don't do that never do that because it's it's simply less accurate than what the job postings are asking for because the job postings are where people are literally stating I will pay you money if you're good at these things and start there learn these things and focus exclusively on those things now some people will have this idea that, well, okay, yeah, that's good and all, Frederick, but what about all these other cool things that people are very excited about? And I usually say, yes, these are very good things to learn, but you have to approach this from a, like, a relevancy perspective. You can't do everything, so you have to start somewhere. And it makes more sense to start with the stuff that is truly core to what you do. It's, I mean, if you're going to learn how to drive, the first thing for you to learn is to operate the pedals or like if you're driving stick or whatever. It's not to change the tire. That's something that comes later. It's a similar sort of situation. You have to pick something and start there. And so you have to kind of remember this thing uh, because a lot of you might feel an anxiety over not knowing all the things of a senior developer guys you're not supposed to know everything that a senior knows and I'm very sorry to say that some companies don't understand that and some managers don't understand that you have weird expectations and so forth and so forth uh, but uh, at the end of the day if someone is hiring a junior developer it's not like they're expecting you to know the same sort of things that a senior, well, it, it should be that way at the very least. It's unreasonable to expect you to know all the things that a senior knows. And usually the reason why a junior developer gets hired in the first place is because one, they actually have the core skills down. Because that's the thing, that's the reason why you hire a junior software developer. Not to have someone who's going to lead your company, to have someone who knows at least, at the very least, the basics really well. And then shows a genuine strong interest in learning more. So that you can onboard them and educate them in the tool stack that you are using at that given company. That's kind of the thing that matters, to, or rather it is usually the thing that matters 
to most companies. I'm not saying every company because I've said this a hundred times before. One of the problems with being a software developer is that the expectations can be a little bit warped. In one company you might be the best programmer and in another company you might not even get the job or you're going to be the worst because the expectations are different. But as I said, if you focus on the core skills, and I know now the question is going to be, oh, what are the core skills, Frederick? I have answered this question like a hundred times before, and it's a little bit. It depends a little bit on if you're going to be front end, back end, full stack, ops, etc., etc. But you have to fi you, you you should be able to figure out what are the most in, in demand things that people are asking for through the job postings or through you know that's the sort of thing that you can go and look for, for on Google or whatever you're doing right to figure out what you need to learn and then there are roadmaps and so forth and so forth uh, and just focus on that focus on that until you have it down to the point where this is kind of it's simple for you and when you really have those core skills then you branch out then you can look into more advanced things or things that are a little bit different and so forth and if you're truly interested in the job that you do that stuff is going to happen kind of organically even without you trying so what i want you to take away from this is that a junior software developer what they should avoid is literally anything that isn't strictly tied into core development skills and for, say, a full-stack developer, that's usually HTML, CSS, JavaScript, some type of SBA framework, a back-end language, HTTP, Git with version control and all that good stuff, a database of some sort, so forth and so forth. And then you have the theoretical stuff like object-oriented programming and, you know, the list kind of goes on. It's a very long list. It's going to keep you very, very busy and most likely for years if you want to get good at it and uh, the reason why you should stick with that and only focus on that is because that is literally the thing that matters to nine, uh, to, to literally every company like in, that's the base layer it's like going through, it's like learning uh, the basics if you're going to be a, going to the military or be a doctor or be anything like you have to start somewhere learn the basics first and then you can specialize and become like this more advanced senior type of profile and you will get there i promise you you will get there if you just continue but you have to have that base layer first because without it you're not going to get hired and trust me when i say this guys I have been in many interviews with senior level software developers with more than 10 years of experience who didn't even know the basics and they didn't get the job because they're pointless like they're completely worthless to the company and that's not the place that you want to be so focus on those core skills because to anybody who's hiring a junior software developer that's the thing that they're, they're going to check first and foremost that's the thing that they're going to prioritize the second thing is are you willing to learn even more so focus on that. I promise you it's going to pay off. Have a great day.